everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. I want to say a special shout out to everyone who's listening to the recording or the podcast. I know most people are tuning in that way. And hello to everyone who's here live. Today I'm going to be sharing about can you really release pain, chronic pain, instantly? A lot of people understand about mind body medicine, about the body's ability to heal itself, but try as they may, it's not working. And that's exactly what I found when I was trying to heal myself. It kind of doesn't really work that way. Uh, so I'll share a little bit from my journey. Hello, good morning, Nicole, Kimberly, Courtney. Um, I always love hearing where people are tuning in from. Hello, Michelle. So um, there's more women especially than ever, but more men and women living in severe chronic pain than ever before in history. And it's kind of a conundrum to think about like, why is this happening? There are so many things we can learn about with like, what's going on in the brain and what's going on with my diet that's contributing to pain or certainly lifestyle, inflammation, there's all kinds of contributing factors we can learn about. But what I'm gonna share about is how to actually um, ignite the body's ability to heal itself and release sometimes instantly the symptoms that you're having in your body. Now, the physical body is always responding to the energy frequency we're in, your electromagnetic frequency. Beneath all of the, the physical reality, our cells are made of molecules, our molecules are made of atoms. The atoms, when we look at the smallest parts, are actually waves of energy. There's not a physical static thing, it's waves of energy that are constantly changing. And so our physical body, as we experience it, can instantaneously shift when we shift the energy we're in. Okay, so Nancy, hello from Pennsylvania. Hello, Rachel. Lisa from South Florida. I've had chronic knee pain for almost 40 years. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I used to have this really severe um, knee pain after this injury skiing um, for many, many years. And um, I don't even remember which knee it is now. Courtney says, hi from New York. I'm tuning in from Western New York. Woohoo. Okay, Deborah, Joan, Pamela from the UK. All right, everyone. And if you have pain, certainly um, share what you're experiencing or like how long has it been going on? What have you been experiencing? And even if it's like a chronic illness thing that's not necessarily just a pain syndrome, but maybe like fatigue or um, digestive problems and things like that. So I will be speaking to that today. Okay, so in my own experience as a physician, there's a ton I learned about the, how the brain processes pain, especially in osteopathic medicine. We learn a lot more about the nervous system, the, the anatomy of your nervous system, and what pain has to do with all that. The brain will actually turn up the gain, or it's like turning up the volume on the areas that you pay the most attention to. So if you're constantly, you know, sending love to your arm, oh, beautiful arm, I love you, I love you, and sensing that area of the body, it'll actually ignite health and, and, and anti-aging and, and chemicals that support your body's health to that area specifically. But that's not what most of us ever do. Most of it, what happens is your body's getting your attention through pain. And so the attention you give a certain area is like, oh, that's my bad arm. Or every time you sense any sensation from that area, it's like, oh, God, I'm so frustrated. Oh, I just hate this. Oh, I can't stand this. It makes us feel helpless, hopeless, frustrated at best, but really despairing at worst, especially when the pain becomes chronic. But what we don't realize is like, we're the ones in charge of this response, how the brain is registering sensation from our body. Now, a lot of times we've been conditioned to fear what we sense or to have this idea that being a sensual being is bad or wrong and should be suppressed. So there's this fear of the body, not only judgment and hatred of the body, I don't like how I look, I shouldn't look like this, oh, my body's so you know fat or ugly or whatever. You know, We notice our body and then we have judgment. Um, but we actually learn to just suppress the body altogether, like the body is bad and the body is wrong and this physical thing is meant to be controlled. So it's not the harmonic relationship between the signals from the brain going out to create harmony in the body. 
And it's not that we don't have the science to show what happens when we do. If you send love to your breasts, if you send love to your gut, your digestive system, if you send love and appreciation to your feet, your ankles, your knee, wherever you're feeling pain, it will actually create chemical shifts and changes. It will decrease inflammation. So if you've had like osteoarthritis or any kind of inflammatory arthritis, um, you will turn that process off. Um, and it so decreases stress hormones, inflammatory chemicals, and it increases endorphins, so pain, natural pain relief. It increases um, uh, oxytocin, which has us feel a sense of warmth and love and um you know, we cherish our body. It will actually ignite healing chemicals and hormones when we do the opposite, when we send love to what we notice. We sense an area and we feel a sense of it's okay, body. You can let this go. I love you. And we're willing to listen and receive what's happening as opposed to doing everything we can to turn it off and tune it out. Okay. Pamela says, I have chronic neck pain. This is what I had for many, many years. It was like 20 years. Nicole, chronic fatigue, weight loss, severe head pressure, balance issues, dizziness. I'm ready to release it all. Well, and we do have the new program. I know a lot of people have been waiting for the last couple of weeks, the mind body solution for pain release. I'll talk about it a little bit today, but I will put the, um, Ashley, Jess, would you put the link in there so people can, um, check out the, the new pain release program. Sharo says, hi from Chicago. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis for 18 months and low energy and hypothyroidism for the last 20 years. That was really similar to what I was diagnosed with too. So for those of you who don't know my story, when I was in medical school, I developed this really obscure illness with a lot of severe pain, muscle spasms, joint pain, migraine headaches. Um, but I also had these like chills, aches, um, severe fatigue and digestive problems. And so I saw like every doctor under the sun and no one could figure out what was going on, which in that model, we don't really have a good way of looking at this. We can look at the physical body, but if there's something going on, like the energetic frequency, emotional, mental, our past history, trauma, judgment of the body, all this suppression, there's really nothing we have to look at that, evaluate that, and treat that. So I, I know for so many people with these syndromes, even like fibromyalgia, which we know a lot more about now, or chronic fatigue syndrome, um, or even hypothyroid disease, it's like, well, why did your body start attacking your thyroid? Why did your body start, you know, why did your thyroid break down? Usually it has to do with the adrenals, which have to do with stress and overrunning the body. When the body doesn't get what it needs, these are the things that happen. But we have to have a way to look at what is sucking all the energy from your body and making it so impossible for your body to carry on these normal functions. And so that's, um, that's why so many people will see like a zillion different practitioners and nothing's really getting better. You've got to be able to look underneath the physical and look at the energetic, the blueprint your body's in. Leanne says, I'm Leanne from Florida. I have chronic pain and I call it my texting injury as it's in my shoulder blade and exacerbated by typing or texting. Okay, thank you. Katie, chronic migraine, chronic fatigue, light noise sensitivity, digestive issues, hormone problems, plus plus. Wendy, I have this belief that with age comes pain. I've had a lot of clients that even subconsciously have this belief. Well, you know, I'm getting older, so I have to fight even harder for my health. I'm getting older, so I have to do even more to stay healthy. And I thought, hmm, is that really true? And why do we buy into that as true? And what if we let go of that idea entirely and got on the thread of, Every day as I go forward in life, my body, my body functions better and better, more and more healthfully. And that has absolutely been my experience because I've invited that. My body feels younger and lighter. There's, um, God, I mean, not only did I live with chronic pain for so many years that isn't here anymore, but there was always this sense of like being overwhelmed and overrun and I got to go, go, go. It was like my adrenals were just running. And now there's way more harmony and ease and fluidity and i've practiced that and my body's definitely responded um she says all these muscle aches bone on bone etc um which i'm going to speak to a little bit too like even if there is bone on bone structurally even if there is a split a slipped disc even if there is um a nerve impingement even if there is like whatever fill in the blank physically we have seen that 
it doesn't necessarily equate to pain or dysfunction, that we can have totally fluid function and have these physical structural discrepancies. So it's not equated to what we think like, oh, well, you've got this nerve impingement, that's what your pain's coming from. Or you've got this slip disc, there's your pain. Or you have bone on bone, forget it. You are not gonna be pain-free. And it's not true. <laughs> I have seen so many patients become completely pain-free and their bone is still meeting bone on bone. What's happening? You've changed the way sensation is transmitted through the nervous system. So you still have a slip disc, but you've changed the way the body is receiving the information at that area. And it doesn't mean you don't, don't do things structurally to support your body. Taking this away, uh, you know, repatterning re what's going on in the brain is not going to have you not nurture your body. It's actually going to have you nurture your body more because you get out of fear. You have more awareness of what does my body really need? You get out of fear. So there's less like, dysfunction, food cravings, imbalance, hormonal, you know, um, chaos. So you're actually doing more in alignment with your health than trying to override that, you know, trying to override self-sabotaging behaviors. All right, Kathleen, hello, Stephanie. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Courtney says, I currently have an ear infection, which has been going on for many days now. It's been very uncomfortable. I know this will heal, but it's hard to let it heal on its own and its own time. As I write this, a lot of this issue is totally about releasing control, conditions, and timelines. Okay, so one of the things we were doing our rehearsal, or it's one of our performances the other night for Mamma Mia, and the woman playing Donna, who's the lead, she's like, oh God, I just have this earache, and I know I'm getting an ear infection, and I can feel it building up. And I spent like two minutes to just kind of help her ear drain and send love to that area of her body to help this all relax, because her neck was also really clenched up. Um, the shoes we're wearing, these big platform shoes, kind of throw off your spine a little bit because you're dancing in them. So I treated her upper cervicals and helped this area just kind of like drain and release. But a big part of what I did was just put my hands on that part of her body and, and let like talk to her body. You can do this yourself, body. It's okay to let this go. It's okay to relax because your body's just trying to protect you. Like, <gasps> okay, let's clench it all up and hold it together because there's some instability. So if you just allow the relaxation to happen, it can loosen up your upper cervical spine, and then you can do some things to just help your body drain. So supporting your body's healing mechanism doesn't mean, oh, I'm just gonna leave it alone and sit there and do nothing. If you tune in, what is body, what do you need? What's going on? You've gotta get out of fear, which is like the most important piece. Um, and you've gotta ask the question and be willing to sense what's going on in my body and actually feel things. And a lot of us um, have been taught not to feel. So as soon as you tune in, it's like, okay, how are you feeling? What are you feeling in your body? People will say, I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't feel anything. And then they begin to think, maybe something's wrong with me and I don't have that ability, which is like insane because it's your body and we all have the ability and there is neuroplasticity in your brain. So your body has the ability to shift and change what you're paying attention to and develop the ability to sense into certain areas um, very fluidly and fully. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Pamela, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, but my worst pain is my neck. Do herniated discs, arthritis. I have dizziness and it scares me when my neck hurts. I'll be dizzy. All right, let's get into some of the work now because this is bringing up a great point. So the first thing is that the root cause of what's actually going on isn't about, oh, you have this kind of pain, oh, here's your root cause. Or you have that, you know, it's nerve pain, here's your root cause. Oh, you have this, this is inflammatory pain, here's your root cause. Or this is related to an autoimmune illness. It's, that is not in any way, shape, or form ever going to lead to what's the true root of what's going on for you. However, connecting with, and this is what I did in the program, the mind-body solution for pain release is, to help you connect with that depth of the depth of the depth that underlies what's actually going on here and helps you transmute that. And it's so much easier than you think. So if you begin to feel into the area of your body that has pain, so for a beautiful Pamela, her neck, and then 
tune into this like these two herniated discs and arthritis. You might have seen pictures of that if they showed you like x-rays or you might just have the word of like, I have this herni herniated disc. Um, it will carry meaning to you. So if you just feel into that, the physical area, and then this idea, I have this herniated disc thing, I have this fibromyalgia, it will, you'll feel it will have an energy. It might feel like doom and gloom and hopelessness and like <gasps> oppressive, which is kind of what it feels like for you, some oppress, it's like oppression, like I'll never be okay, uh, but it will actually carry an energy. So feel into that and for everyone else who's got, you know, whatever is going on, it's your knee or your back, and I want you to tune into this area specifically and then just take a few deep breaths. Relax everything, let it go. And now bring in light into your body. Bring light in, welcome in the light. Good, welcome in the light. And now bring your awareness to this area of your body and just feel what you feel. So feel, oh, this area of my neck, or this is what I feel in my knee. And then you can start by just physically sensing it. Um, I was just reading. Um, it scares me, like Pamela's saying, it scares me when my neck hurts. So become aware of like, oh, I feel this sensation, and then I go into fear. I notice and pay attention to this area, and then I subsequently, or con at, at the same time um, go into this fear so you're actually sending a signal of fear back to that area and it will tense the area which obstructs blood flow and oxygen and nutrients and it also prevents waste products and energy being carried away so it really keeps that area from healing so i want you instead to just sense that area of your body and just notice what you feel and you can even write it down um, anger fear, like write it down because that gets it out. So it's not just happening in here anymore. And it's not just happening subconsciously. It takes it to a whole new level of consciousness to one, sense it for yourself and notice, okay, this pain feels sharp, dull, you know, big, focal and small. Um, it feels soft or it feels really hard. Like notice the physical sensations and then keep paying attention while you breathe and bring in light and notice anything else that comes up. Is there fear? Is there anger? Is there hopelessness? And just feel that so it comes into your awareness. Then the next step of that is to get it out, like share it, say it out loud and write it down. And now it comes out to an even like a deeper tangibility. So it's not actually what is the inevitable thing. It's just what you're experiencing in this moment. So let yourself notice. What do you feel? We, we try so hard to not feel what's happening, but you're going to go in the opposite direction. Tune in with total curiosity. Okay, how would I describe this? Write down the, you know, the physical sensations and then start to notice, is there anything else going on in this area? And then just write back um, to me in here. Pain, especially chronic pain, is repressed sensation. When you think of it as a sensation, it neutralizes it. But what we tend to think of it is as like the, 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 the enemy. We think of it as this doom and gloom, this bad thing, this pathology, this toxic you know, enemy, and we fight and we fight and we fight and we fight. But whatever you fight against, what you resist persists because the energy going into creating the monster is your energy. And the energy that goes into the fight, it's like if you put your hands together, can put your hands together and just hold them like this. But if you push your hands and push your hands, you got to keep pushing both of them to the same amount to keep it from, you know, going one side to the other. You got to have to fight against the energy that you're creating. Okay, Nancy says, if we send love to our body, but inside we really feel negative emotions, isn't that disharmonic? So I would say what we're doing here is just, it's a neutrality. I'm willing to um, experience what am I sensing? What do I sense in this area of the body? So it's noticing beyond fear and judgment. Maybe you're noticing the fear, maybe you're noticing the judgment, but stay in that curious um, investigation. Hmm, what do I feel in this area of my body? Huh, 
What's going on? You can't begin to perceive what does my body require if you're not first willing to perceive what am I sensing? You have to be willing to receive input and information before you can get a certain kind of information such as what's required here for me to heal. Teresa says, I'm having great results with this work. Can you address the healing possibilities for people who've had their thyroid removed? So it's the same thing. When we get into harmony with our body, we can, first of all, your body is a walking pharmacy and there are amazing things and chemicals and hormones your body can create that can compensate for what is missing from your thyroid or what your body's not creating to that degree because the thyroid isn't there. So huge amount of that can happen. And there can be resources you come into very, very easily that are the exact thing that your body needs to replete your thyroid. So there could be a supplement, there could be a medication, there could be like a zillion things, but you don't have to go through all of them. You could actually align with what would be easy for me and what would it take for this to come into my experience so that I receive what I need effortlessly. And it's crazy because synchronicities show up in your life to the degree that you are in that alignment. You meet a functional medicine practitioner and they're like, I know exactly what to do. Boom, they give you this thing. But if you're in a fear-based alignment, what happens is not that. You could find that exact same practitioner, but it would not have an ignition, meaning because of your alignment of I receive all I need in grace and ease actually creates that practitioner knowing, oh, here's what I'm thinking. Let's do this. There's a harmonic that happens in your energy field that can invite other people to assist you. So I've seen this all the time when I'm in when I was in my practice or like if I work with someone on Skype, if I can just bring them into a frequency of um, I'm willing to receive health and abundance. I'm willing to receive health, wealth, and abundance. Then there's so many possibilities that can happen. I can hear things and see things and know things, and it's like you know some things will just light up. Yes, 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 yes. This is what. To guide her with this is a particular supplement or this is a particular exercise yes so in the beginning before we open up um, before I help that person open up their system it's like we just use the brain okay what do I think well I think this could be a good idea but then that could be a good idea and you understand there's like eight million things you could learn and still never really get to the answer so you've got to come into the alignment of I honor love and cherish my body and I open to receive all I need with grace and ease. So Teresa, that will allow the harmonics of your body to function as never before into a heightened level of health and be if there are things you need to supplement with, which if your thyroid's been completely removed, there may be some things you need to replete your thyroid that will help support your body. And you'll, you'll be open to receiving those in a whole different way. I hope that makes sense. Nicole says, when I've sent love to my body and really focused on filling areas with love and light, allowing it to be, things usually don't shift. Or is this because it's a means to an end? So if you're doing this as a means to an end, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to love my body. I'm going to love my body. Where's the prize? Where's the prize? You're not actually allowing a shift in frequency. You're still feeling the lack or the fear, and you're trying to make something happen so you don't have to feel it. And I get that this is like a subtle thing. Like, what? What actually happens is when you're in the harmonic of I love and accept myself fully, that is an energy shift. It's already shifted. There's a difference between I have this big problem and I have to fix it versus all is well. It's okay to be exactly where I am right now. So in the um, mind body solution for pain release, that's one of the foundational pieces is to come into a space where I am right now to be in some level of surrender and acceptance, love and acceptance where I am right now. Not when I get better or when this happens or if I can figure it out and work around it, but right now because what your body most needs is your loving presence. And so you can't say, oh, I did that, but it didn't shift anything because that's impossible. When you shift your frequency, you already shifted something and you'll feel that energy harmonic even if the physical has not shifted yet. It is the energetic, the energy that underlies the expression of what's happening cellularly. And that's the energy we're going to work with. Um, Amy says, I've experienced gut and digestive issues for as long as I can remember, starting with 
when I was a child, it's continued through adulthood. Doctors were never able to figure it out. Now I'm in my 30s. I have autoimmune issues, although these are much better since I've been following you. At my core, I truly believe it's worry that's sucking my energy. Shifting this is what I feel has been a huge challenge. Okay, Amy, yeah, there's a ton this work will offer you. And you can start with the mind, um, the mind body solution for pain release because we're incorporating a lot of these principles there. The instant elevation program is also awesome because it helps you have consciousness of what's going on in your body. Totally different ways of working with that. Someone asked me, are you using the same tools? No, because that program was already created, so I wouldn't have created a whole new program with the same tools. This is really simple. There's um, a few um, videos that I'll walk you through that will help you understand what's actually going on in your body that maybe most doctors aren't able to perceive because they're only looking at the physical. Okay, so thank you though. Thank you for that comment too. I'm glad you're tuning in. Uh, Susie says, I'm so fed up with this struggle. And there's, um, so the, I'm adding a couple things to the program over this week. We just created it in the last week and my team has been awesome about getting it together because I, I knew we could do it really quickly and people were asking for it. So um, but there are two things I'm going to add. And one of them is more of the EFT tapping around, I'm so fed up with this. I can't stand this. I'm so sick of this. I hate my body. I hate my life. Everything that goes along with that. And then the other thing is a meditation where we are using um, music harmonics. And music harmonics, certain kinds of harmonics, have been shown to help resonate with the like the nitty gritty things that are there that are keeping you in struggle and keeping your body from healing and help that move and release. So um, I've come across this amazing woman um, who created particular harmonic work um, that that is specifically speaking to the body and a releasing physical cellular energies of you know trauma grief despair um fear that can get locked in the physical body and then propagate that inflammatory cycle over and over and over even if you're like i'm sending love to my body but it's like to get even deeper and really meet those parts of yourself is what's required and um and jill mattson's work is really great for that and it totally matches what we're doing here with these exercises because this is what it does you've got to you've got to meet your own pain before you can let it release what this part of you needs is love and compassion so if you can allow the nervous system to settle down which it does when you come into a space of i love and accept myself fully i'm willing to feel what's happening here and let my body have what it needs. It's a completely different harmonic and it will neutralize those patterns in your nervous system. So that's what's in the mind body solution for um, pain release. And I'm super excited to have people receive that. But even just in this broadcast, this is what I wanted to bring a taste of to you. If you can begin to connect with your body, feel your body, uh, notice the sensations, let yourself have, do not repress, the sensations, especially in the areas of your body that have so much pain, your body can let you know what is needed. You can get more information. Okay. Um, yeah. Kate says this type of work is how we healed from fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, severe migraines, and anxiety. I'm looking forward to it. Um, yes, Rachel, also for severe period pain. Um, it's the same thing when we've repressed information through our womb. Whether you have a uterus or you don't, it's the, the nervous system is still set up this way. Um, then when sensation comes in with like period movement of the, you know, because your smooth muscle of the uterus will contract, um, it will be perceived as pain. There's so much resistance in the system that when that sensation comes through, it's painful. It's not a pleasant fluid sensation. Uh, I explained this to my niece a while back. She's 17 and has never known pain-free periods. And she said, well, isn't that normal? Doesn't everyone have that? She doesn't have anyone in her life who, that's me, who hasn't had period pain, like her friends, everyone she's talking to. And I said, well, I've never had that. But I do notice when there's sensation, I let my body know, body, you're doing great. This is exactly how, what you're, you're doing the right thing. This is exactly what we should be doing. A lot of the ideas and beliefs we have, especially about being cyclic, we're not stable, we should be this like, you know, linear, rational, masculine, but the feminine is ever changing. It's cyclic. 
It's not that it's unpredictable. It is very predictable as we go through our cycles, but not very few of us have really learned about what those cycles are. Yeah, we have our period every month, but what about the rest of the cycle? What does it mean to be cyclic in nature? And how can we tap into so much wisdom through that cyclic nature and through our wisdom? So um, there's a lot more that the body, especially in the womb, has to share with us. But when we shut it down and suppress it, like it totally <sighs> leads to a lot of problems. Okay, hello, Meryl Marguerite from Edmonton. Nicole, fear and anger are huge emotions I feel in my neck and head. It always has been. And in the program, we go deeper using EFT and some other things to let those be released. Um, like we said in this broadcast, even if you just write down, I am so angry and like journal about it, let it have a voice. Um, maybe share it with someone. Sometimes it's hard to share with a partner because it can get glitchy, but maybe someone who's neutral. Um, hey, here's what I noticed. Here are the emotions, ideas, and sensations I felt when I really tuned into this physical pain. Um, and let, let it have a voice. Like, doesn't mean you buy into it. It just means you just appreciate, wow, all the ways I think everyone sucks and life is awful and I don't want to be here. Doesn't mean you take it seriously. It just means you acknowledge that there's this part of you where this is what you're thinking. Okay, thank you. Cher D. Jenny, hello. Ah, oh, great to see you. Stacy, what about mental and emotional pain? It, it's all the same. Um, and that's why when I, I mentioned about the root cause, your root cause is what's right underneath the pain. Like it's going to reveal to you where you've suppressed hopelessness, where you've believed that you're inadequate or there's something wrong with you and you need to improve. Uh, that was huge for me for so many years. And when I had that autoimmune illness, that was like the core thing that underlied it, that had me constantly trying to improve, improve, you know, excel, succeed, achieve, 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 do more, do more. And that way of life was like totally toxic for me. And something more fluid was available. And my body was trying to tell me like, Kim, let this go. It's okay. Honor who you are. They're gifts you haven't even opened about the beauty of who you are. And so to let it come through without buying into it, the core of what was created was that inadequacy. And it could have created, you know, Parkinsonian syndrome. It could have created nerve pain. It could have created, you know, adrenal fatigue. It could have created like anything. So it's not to look at the physical and then determine what the root cause. You've got to look at the energetic to get to the root cause. If you tune into the physical, it will bring you there. And that's exactly the path we go through in the mind-body solution for pain release. And so whether it's a chronic illness, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, it's all the same thing of like, where have I suppressed sensation? So energy is stuck in my body. Yes, mental or emotional. Stacy said, I've conquered physical pain, like a 20-year battle with Raynaud's arthritis and skin infection, but the emotional pain is unbearable. Okay, so we're gonna get into something else here. When we suppress the physical and you conquer, that energy hasn't actually released. It will get suppressed and it will create emotional discord. It can even create like a mental breakdown because your body has to release that energy. It can't be in fluidity and harbor this fear and anger and resentment and I'm wrong and bad and need to fix myself. I'm not good enough, I need to achieve more. You cannot have health and carry those energies. And the way your body can process it most easily is physically. You might have like a cold or a virus and your body rearranges everything and releases all that mental, emotional energy. But what happens is we suppress it. You put cortisone on that rash and now the energy has to go deeper into your system. Or you put pain meds to just suppress what your nervous system is registering and now that energy gets suppressed and creates discord emotionally. This is always 100% of the time how the system works. That is why it's so important to give your body what it needs to support health, meaning support your body's working it out and letting energy move, rather than try to suppress your symptoms. Yes, by supporting health, your body will rebalance and you will be symptom free. That's the whole premise of this work and of the Mind Body Solution for Pain Release program. When your body receives what it needs, 
it, it, it comes into harmony and healing happens, but it doesn't work the other way around. Well, let's, you know, suppress physical symptoms and we call it healing, but now I actually feel worse mentally or emotionally. Or now I, you know, I suppressed these physical symptoms in my musculoskeletal system, but now I have gut dyscrasia where I can't digest food or I'm allergic to, you know, intolerant to 20 foods and my gut biome is off and now I got to treat my gut biome. You're going to keep chasing it around your world until you learn to let the energy move fluidly. And that's exactly what we've done with this work. Katie says, I think I'm surrendering, but I don't think I can be doing it enough as I don't seem to be experiencing the shift in what I want. Yeah, it's, it's about going deeper with yourself to invite your body to communicate. Like the opposite of suppressing it or fixing it is actually what's right about this that I'm not getting. And, and really dive in and let yourself feel everything you feel. Okay, share an empath with complex PTSD. I've been counseling for, in, in counseling for so long and I realize cellular memories can be long standing and counseling keeps us in the mind. Yes, and it can help if you are in a higher energetic harmonic of, of love and compassion for yourself, um, but most people aren't actually incorporating that the way they need to into counseling. So they're just talking about stuff, thinking it will process out. But they haven't really created the space for that to happen. I also have digestive problems and the chemicals have caused my bones to deteriorate and multiple chemical and food sensitivities. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The, the discrepancy will go deeper and deeper into the system. Mm -hmm. Hi, Melody Fargo. Ah, so exciting to see you there. And I'm able to come into a higher harmonic and then I slip back into fear and negative focus. Okay, it's not we're actually slipping back. This is the coolest thing. As we come into a higher harmonic, we open into more love. I am willing to love myself unconditionally. And now all the shit will come up to say, oh, all right, there's space for me to move through. And it will come through. And so you just keep holding the space for even this. Okay, I opened to love and now I kind of feel all this shit. <laughs> Don't decide, oh, now I feel worse and it's bad. Stay open, keep opening, keep inviting. Yes, allow all parts of me to receive love, to come through and release. All the part that's not actually you can't persist and, and live and stay in that harmonic. So just hold the space. I love myself unconditionally and I allow everything I notice to move through. It's okay. Okay. Um, okay, great, great, great. So the link is drkimd.com forward slash pain hyphen release. And I don't think that just put it in there yet, so I'm gonna put it in there now. There you go. If you would like to um, to get the program, it's, um, like I said, there's a couple of things I'm gonna add into it. And it's awesome exactly as it is. I'm super excited about it. I know you'll receive a lot more depth of what we've discussed here. Um, if there are questions anyone has, that, you know, it's all on the page. It should be able to kind of go into detail about what's included. Rachel says, this is so inspiring. Nancy says, is it possible to counteract the negative effect of medications such as proton pump inhibitors, like not absorbing nutrients, if you need to keep taking them for now? Yes, when you are in a higher harmonic, you're body will release waste products more easily and not respond negatively to medications to the same degree. Um, it will very likely bring you into a space where you receive different solutions and different ways of treating the physical body so medications aren't needed. And that's what I see with so many people who I've worked with. But don't make it wrong that you're still taking medications. Keep welcoming your body to this release and through this process. Um, and let it naturally show you like, you know, we don't need that anymore. Or like, it's really like rejecting it. So you're like, all right, I get the message. Let's pause this for now. I wouldn't recommend for anyone just stop taking medications before you consult with your doctor, of course, because what I'm doing here does not equate to a physical relationship with your doctor, especially if they've prescribed them and told you, you do have to take them every day, but become aware. You are actually the one in charge. Ask your body, get clarity. And you can bring that to your doctor's attention if you need to do that so that, um, you know, you can uh, make changes. Um, Melanie, I've already watched all of the videos. Oh, thanks, Melanie. What did you think 
Um, and how did it go? Oh, and we're going to have a live call with this. It's a $97 investment. We'll do a live call, which is going to be huge because I want people to be able to ask questions when they go through the, um, the exercises that I guide you through. What happens? What do you notice in your body? Are there blocks where you feel like, oh, I can't go deeper? And I will guide you through um, doing that. I don't know what the questions are going to be because we're just starting it now, but Melanie, I'd love to hear what you're noticing. Um, Kimberly says, very powerful, Dr. Kim, this is going to help so many. Thank you. Isabel, what if there's so much fear of the feeling or if there's so much fear around everything that's coming up? So it's really helpful and essential to just bring in light, um, remind your body, like remind yourself, it's okay for me to feel what I feel. And so then you're going to notice the pain, feel the pain. I mean, sorry, notice the fear and feel the fear. It's about where does the fear live in your body? Where do you feel it physically? Get into the tangible, sensual experience of it. And then in the program, I guide you more and more how to move it and release it. But even if you just breathe, just do what we've covered here, just breathe through what you notice. Oh my God, this fear is unthinkable. I feel it in my chest. It feels like pressure. Describe it, get connected with it in a neutral way, an observer, journal, um, and then be willing to meet it, feel it, breathe it, let it be as it is and give it space. Melanie says, yes, it's so great. I wrote my love letter to myself. I felt so good. I'm still in a higher harmonic. Oh, beautiful. Can't wait to connect more fully. Okay, so the link is there, drkimd.com forward slash pain hyphen release, R-E-L-E-A-S-E. -E. I put the link in our chat. Um, we'll be here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Uh, Mountain, 10 Pacific. It's 1 p.m. Eastern. I know there's people all over the world listening. I just want to share love with you. And I am so aware that the harmonic we create when we connect this way goes far, far beyond our bodies and is creating tangible measurable effects not only for ourselves and our body but in our world so especially right now where there's so many reasons it seems to feel despair or hopeless or even just angry about what's going on in the world and how many people are doing crazy crazy things um, know that you absolutely unequivocally in every moment have full access to the infinite power that comes through you and that by connecting with it, allowing it to move through your body, allowing it to be expressed and shared in your life, it has a immeasurable effect on everything that's happening. So love people by opening within rather than trying to just make changes without outside of yourself. Um, and the same is true for your body. Allow the healing to come through you instead of trying so hard to heal yourself. Lots and lots of love. I'm at drkimd.com. Amy Sutton says, I just signed up. This live was amazing. Thank you. Oh, so much love to all of you. I look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye.